Hi everyone, welcome. We're down here in my wormery, and in front of me I've got my 130 day old bin now. Last time this bin was fed, last time I put any compostable materials in here for these little guys, it was, uh, it was on the day that the bin had reached its 100 days of age. So that means for the past 30 days they've been only eating the stuff that they were given. So there were plenty of leftovers in there. Because I always feed very generously, and there was plenty of bedding in there too, all so counts as food. You know, I think over that first hundred days, there might have been ten or so feeding. So, so the average time, I think, was somewhere in the neighborhood of every ten days this bin was being given food. But uh, the last time we checked in here, we did sort of try to arrange any food that was remaining in the bin to to be sort of centralized in one spot so it'll be easier for us to see how it's coming along next time we check in. So the... the the food is down the middle. It was um, it was pretty far along, but there was still some stuff in there, and uh, we figured we'd give it another ten days since the last time we were in here. Now that now that it's been another ten days, we're gonna peek in here, see how the food's progressing, and if it looks like the material around is um, pretty good, regardless of the state of the the food that remains, if it looks like all the material in here is ready to go, then we're gonna uh, rearrange the contents so that everything that's in here is moved over to one side and on the opposite side we build a little bit of a uh, fresh environment for them as if it were a brand new bin uh, a place where they can all cruise over to if they start feeling like the old space is a little bit uh, depleted of food and resources so um, I got a number of things here on the table so let me uh, let me bring you in a little bit closer to see what it is so here in this box I've got leaves just dry crushed leaves and um, that's going to be kind of the base and on top of that got some cardboard here just parts of a uh, egg carton and in the bag there's a whole bunch of different small tiny scraps from the freezer everything's been frozen ready to go and in the food category I was going to do a little test of my own here it's a little uh, little bit of hair that I had given myself a little tiny bit of a trim a few days ago and I figured hey I'm gonna hang on to that hair supposedly the worms in a worm bin will eat your hair so I figured I'd try doing a little composting test there with that material as long as we're in here and then on top of the, the layer of um, bedding, which will be leaves, cardboard, we'll go the food with some grit. We usually add some grit to go with the food. Um, and on top of that, we'll be able to also cover that up a little bit more with some more bedding material, some cardboard. And another food layer here, we'll th throw in a little coffee because we, I guess we always do. <laughs> and um, something I like to do when I'm doing one of these, what, you know, what's referred to actually as a horizontal migration is... Sometimes in the past I've uh, set up my horizontal migrations in such a way that I would kind of um, create a little barricade in between where the finished compost was and where my horizontal migration uh, baiting zone is. So uh, so this just becomes like a, a thoroughfare, you know. I, I puncture it full of holes to make it easy for the worms to pass through. But as long as they don't eat the whole thing up right, right away, and they usually do, but in the beginning you can still tell where the the line was, you know, and um, ultimately just end up, ends up becoming more um, bedding anyway, because it just gets destroyed. <laughs> putting, you know, putting a piece of cardboard in between your worms and a fresh supply of food doesn't stand a chance. So, <laughs> um, in here, we're going to see how things are going, and the reason we're all prepared to do this is because we've got a pretty good sense that we, we're going to be able to proceed to that step of... Um, sort of a migration depopulation stage. So let's uh, let's get started here. Okay, the first layer we meet is this plastic layer which has been assuring us that the bin retains its moisture and um, also with the nice moist environment right on the top surface it also promotes a lot of movement around the bin right there on the top surface as well just want to make sure we don't take any hitchhikers might get a little bit too dry out here for you okay now flash forward what we see here is the paper that was covering the um, center of the bin and some of the smaller scraps of paper that were right beneath it that was covering the remaining food. Um, this was 
removed and then underneath that we had started going through the middle of the bin to pick out any larger remaining food scraps and unfortunately I had sort of fouled up on the camera and failed to capture it on video so we're just jumping forward about five minutes of missed work here and I'll catch you up. Seemed like a good idea to just grab this stuff and uh, bring it right over here and leave more finished castings over here and get out more of the stuff that um, still needs more time to get done. Hey, this thing's still holding up good, so we'll cover up with this, with this at the end. I'll just set it aside for now. So the question is, how big of a feeding zone do we want here? I think this might be pretty good, although we could certainly move everything over even further and make this even a little bit bigger. So why don't we do that? We'll try to establish sort of a, a two-thirds, one-third, two-third ratio. I think going all the way to the middle and doing it halfway, I mean, I guess that would be an option. I've seen other people do it that way. Um, it's really up to you as far as how much room is in your bin. So you just gauge it on what you got and what you can do and how you want to play it. The other deciding factor might be, you know, how do you have enough material to create a really large feeding zone over here? I think this should work pretty nicely here. Level things off. And then we can start setting up their migration zone over here. Huh. So this is my collection of leaves. I'll dump this on top. See, my collection of leaves always includes all of the, the leaf stems, you know. So well, then maybe we'll just proceed with putting in our little divide here, dividing wall. <laughs> this is kind of a funny thing. It almost seems like I could have just used one of these, torn it in half, and it would have been enough. Because it doesn't need to be that tall. I don't have all that much material in here. So why don't I just do that? I'll just use half of it. That's why I like doing this. There's always opportunities to improvise and do things <laughs> a little different from the way you had originally planned to do it. I'm wondering, since this whole thing delaminated, none of the holes that I punched in here are going to line up. <laughs> right, I'll just remove that piece that's out of alignment with the holes. Use it as extra bedding. <laughs> All right, cool. Now the bedding that I've put in so far is pretty dry, so I took these and I put in a little bit of water just to let them not be so dry as we place them in here. So now as we switch from the bedding phase to the food phase, I do have a little experimental piece of food that I'm going to place a, an eggshell under so I know that that's where it was in case it gets really popular and gets eaten up. It's actually a little ball of my own hair that I trimmed off. I was getting sick of it being so long. <laughs> eh, maybe I'll just start growing my hair long, who knows. <laughs> all right, so into all the other little cells we've got here. We can start placing some of our itsy bitsy food scraps, all nice fine sized particles. I went right to the bottom of my food collection bag in the freezer and picked out everything large and put it away and uh, everything that remained was all the little itsy bitsy food scraps all kinds of fruits veggies you name it all different types of stuff in here so I think we've got ourselves a very delicious and tempting looking horizontal migration feeding zone over here pretty level let's get some more stuff in here the customary topping for Worm food is grit. Giving them food without grit is almost like serving a house guest a meal without any utensils, right? Because without grit, they can't really grind up the food in their gizzards after they eat it. So it's a real important part of their diet. So our next layer of bedding is our cardboard. Chunked up little pieces of cardboard, which was dry earlier. This too, I soaked it so it wouldn't have to go into the bin dry. Try not to put soaking wet paper in here. 
just damp paper and it basically is soaking wet what can i say <laughs> it's going to be a little bit matted down here so i'm going to see if i can give this next handful a little roughing up try to crush each piece a little bit so it's all bent up and wrinkly so it doesn't have a tendency to mat up against the one next to it might help a little gotta leave the warm space to move around So our food's got a nice layer of bedding on top of it and below it. Nice cozy spot that the worms are probably already hearing about, saying, oh my goodness, what's happening over there? I can't wait to go check that out. <laughs> so, as we promised, we're going to give them a little shot of coffee. So it's a pretty generous layer if you look at it, actually. So this is all good food for them as well. So I should have used my glove, no big deal. All right, we've almost reached the level of the material in the bin here. Luckily, we've got a pretty good sized bin that we've got plenty of room in to do this. Sometimes it gets a little bit awkward if you're working in a more shallow size tub. So to have that extra free board or whatever you want to call it, that extra space up here to work, pile things up without having it spill out, that's a, it's kind of a plus. But before we finish, we're going to give this a top layer of what we started with some more leaves. I was wondering what if I took my dry leaves that look like this and I ran them through my leaf blower bagger connect collector one more time if these really dry brittle stems would break in the process of coming up through the back one more time I might be able to end up with more fine material I'm going to have to try that out next time I get the leaf blower out. Besides picking up freshly collected leaves, I'll take some of my older, drier stuff and see if I can better shred it with the collector. Oops. One of the hazards. This was a fairly new glove. Oh well. I usually try to get at least a few uses out of each pair of gloves before they end up in the trash. But luckily we're done. All we're left with is just a little bit of cover up and clean up. Right? So let's get the... Uh, piece of paper that we salvaged from earlier. It's a good cover-up item here as well, well as the plastic that we're going to cover up with too. Except from this point going forward, we're only going to use half of the material. So we're going to fold it in half and we're going to use that to cover only our feeding zone. Because now that this material is technically in the finished state and they're going to be depopulating, allowing it to dry out Allowing it to air out will also contribute to making it a little bit less comfortable for the worms. As soon as the material that they're in starts to get drier and drier, they will definitely go in search of a, a more damp and hospitable space. That's what we're going to be focusing on now is keeping this uh, horizontal feeding moving by making sure that this uh, migration zone is kept nice and cozy for them. We're on to the um, next phase now. As far as I'm concerned, we're no longer technically feeding anymore when we start feeding over on the side. To me, that's more focused on migration, feeding just being part of it. While earlier, the whole purpose of the bin was to be feeding it and placing compostable materials into it. And since it's no longer that purpose, this bin's purpose at this point is to get to the finish line. So anything related to the addition of food is, is in my mind at least, just part of trying to depopulate the castings, get the worms migrated. So, All right, so I just tried to fold in the corners of this piece of newspaper a little bit to make it snug up to the corner a little bit better. So now we've got a pretty good cover here. One half of it really geared towards the retention of moisture and a kind of a recirculating terrarium effect on this side where the feedings and the migration target area is. While on this side, the paper um, doesn't really work very well as a vapor barrier, so the, um, the moisture just seems to go right through it as if it wasn't even there. So um, it's the perfect covering for material that we'd like to keep covered, but we'd like to also see it air out and start drying out a little bit as well. So this is exciting. I always love it when a worm bin gets to this stage because then, you know, it starts to become a curiosity to see how many can we get into the, um, into the horizontal migration feeding zone. So at some point soon, maybe 10 days, 
per our tradition with this bin, maybe sooner, who knows, we'll see how it fits into the schedule. But after a few days, we'll come back in here and we'll see how this horizontal migration is progressing. And also, how is the material looking, you know? Is it depopulating? Is it drying out nicely? Does it look like it would go through a sifter if we wanted to get to that stage and start clearing it out? So, um, hoping for a nice dry stuff over here and hoping for a nice, rich, worm, dense population over here. This is also a good time for you to start thinking about the creation of a new home for those little guys. So once these worms start collecting here, and you've got a good bunch of them, at some point you're going to want to get them out of there, rebuild this thing so that it can continue to function the way it was, continue luring worms out of the finished compost. But those worms that have been located need a new place to be too. So um, if in the next 7 to 10 days there is an opportunity to move a lot of worms out of here, then I should already be gearing up with the build of a new bin. I do have a video that shows how that's done, so I'll uh, go ahead and create a link in the corner so you can check that out, how to set up a worm bin in preparation for the arrival of worms. So hopefully you'll check that out too if you haven't seen it yet. Well that's it for today everyone, hopefully you enjoyed the video, I hope you did, and if you did, please remember to give me a thumbs up, that's always really appreciated. Also consider becoming a subscriber to the channel as well. Alright everyone, have a great day, thanks for watching, bye.